Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt. This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. It's been a long time since I've seen you, John. How are you? I'm very well. Very well. I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to this weekend. Like everybody else, it has, uh, has the makings of being a very special fight. You know, it's been a long time in the making. We've been, all been waiting for it. It's all been looking forward to it. And there's not too many like this, Umar, because, you know, I always think it's the test of a good fight when people come up to you, when they message you, when they tweet you or however they contact you and they say, how do you think it's going to go? What do you think of the fight? That's the test of a good fight. And this is one of those. Everyone in boxing, all fans uh, can't really pick a winner. As you said, everyone's questioning um, different aspects about Joe and Daniel. And a lot of that we will find out on Saturday night. What have you made the f of the fact that the bookmakers have Joe as such a big underdog? Well, it's something like four to one on, isn't three it? To one, yeah. uh, Daniel Dubois. Yeah. That's a, With Joe, it's three oh, to one. Joe's three to one against. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a big price, isn't it? And uh, you don't have to dig too far around boxing circles to come across people who, who really do fancy him. He's got the amateur pedigree. He's physically the bigger man. And the one thing which struck me when I saw him yesterday when he uh, arrived at the hotel was how slim he looks. He looks as though he's really got himself into, into great shape. You know, I mean, if you're going to ask me who do I think is going to win it, then at this stage, I'm not going to stick my neck out and say that. I think the press conference is going to be very telling. You know, let's see who looks the more confident, the more relaxed, the more in control of themselves at that point. But uh, all I do hope is that the two guys come along and are in absolutely the peak of, thought, peak of form and that they bring, bring the best Daniel Dubois and bring the best Joe Joyce into that fight because this is what we want. Of course, we know Daniel is one behind Alexander Usyk in the WBO. Now, the winner of this fight will be in line for a world title next year. Do you think, I know they will be in line, but do you think Daniel and Joe are ready for someone like an Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua? Well, I think, there's a, I think uh, having seen Usyk against Chisora, as far as I'm concerned, there are still question marks about Alexander Usyk. You know, OK, he wound up ultimately winning fairly widely on points, but he didn't, to me, really show a heavyweight's punch. And he'll certainly get his chin tested if he goes in against either Joyce or Dubois. So do I think they're ready for it? So I think absolutely 100% they're ready for it. And I think that, you know, if that fight happens somewhere down the line, either for Joe or for Daniel, then you could make a very persuasive argument for either of them by virtue of their size and their power, having too much for Alexander Usyk. Well, it's a fantastic matchup. As you said, a lot of people cannot call it, so tune in to BT Sport this Saturday to see what happens. John, uh, a much talked about issue right now in boxing is the fact that the government outlined a number of sports that they would fund, and boxing, unfortunately, wasn't one of those sports. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think they should have done. I mean, I agree 100% with what Frank Warren said in his public uh, statements about it, and also Eddie Hearn, what he said, you know, the open letter which got reprinted in the times i think boxing does a hell of a lot for kids right across uh, society but particularly from disadvantaged communities you know i mean i think that people who would argue otherwise or who've just swept through something which has given boxing nothing ought to go and speak to the likes of glenn rhodes in sheffield or to nick manners in, uh, in Leeds, they need to go and talk to these guys and see exactly what's being done. And yes, should, should, these, should, should the sport be given assistance? Yes, 100%, I think it should be. 40 million to racing, 135 million to rugby union, nothing to boxing, that's crazy. I think a lot of people watching this will totally agree with you on that one. Do you believe the government will do something about it after Eddie and Frank have written to them? Well, let's see. I'd like to think so. I think, uh, I think as well as Eddie and Frank, I think uh, that th things might move a bit if there was support from some of the big men. Maybe if, uh, if Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury were to say likewise, then that could have an effect because we've seen what Marcus Rashford has done speaking to 
to Boris Johnson, maybe if some of the stars of boxing line up and say, look, come on, rethink, let's do something about it. Maybe there will be a rethink. It would be, it would be nice to think so, Mark. It really would. Just before we round off, John, again, another much-talked-about issue in the sport or, or talking point in the sport at the moment is Deontay Wilder and some of the excuses he has come out for for his loss with Tyson Fury. Uh, there's been a lot. Do you want to just uh, give your thoughts on that as well, please, John? I don't think he's shown a lot of class. I think um, you know, bring, talking about Anthony Joshua again, you know, when AJ lost to Ruiz, that was an embarrassing defeat for him. He got knocked out. He didn't just get beaten. He got floored and he got smashed. He went away, sorted himself out, came back and found a way to win the rematch and to win it very convincingly. Now, AJ didn't bleat and moan about losing to Ruiz. And I think it's a little bit sad that Deontay Wilder has done. I think he would have had a lot more respect if he'd gone away and maybe take a fight, an interim fight, whatever. But then to say, right, I'm ready, I know what I did wrong, and I can put it right. I think to talk about, about gloves and about, well, we know all the issues he's talked about. So I'm not going to list them yet. It's, you know, I mean, it, it beggars belief, doesn't it? And I think anybody who has anything to do with boxing, particularly fighters who've had to go through the, the trauma, if you like, of defeat, I think anybody involved in boxing would say it's a little bit demeaning to see Wilder sp speaking and behaving in this manner. I'm trying to defame him and take the, the credit away for well, Tyson's win. Exactly. You know, I mean, if, if Tyson was a different person, you'd probably, you'd probably think that it might be actionable what Wilder has said. I mean, there were, there were Las Vegas officials in that room when his hands were being, were being wrapped and representatives of his, own, of his own camp, for goodness sake, and yet he's still saying that the gloves were somehow loaded. Now, to my way of thinking, that's defamatory. And if Tyson had chosen to go down the legal route, he may well have had some recourse in law. Anyways, as I said, this Saturday night, we've got a brilliant domestic bust-up between two heavyweights from this country, which is a very rare thing, so tune into BT Sport. Yeah, and let's hope there's no bleating and moaning afterwards. <laughs> is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt.